Okay, welcome, welcome to the Cloud English Podcast. We haven't decided a name yet for the uh, the weekend discussions, but we will. Welcome, everybody. We're going to be talking today about cultural differences. We're going to be, uh, because we're from two different cultures, so we're going to be going through dating culture, marriage, raising kids, and uh, parents, and that sort of stuff we're going to be talking about. So that should be interesting. It's good to have everybody here. It is Sunday, December 4th, 2052, and it's cold outside. I went for a walk this morning. What time I woke up? Um, eight. I think I woke up at eight. Eight? Yeah, you, uh, that's yeah. I've actually started getting up earlier and earlier. Uh, sometimes I get up at seven. Sometimes I get up at seven thirty. Mm. What about you? What time? Well, what what's your ideal wake up time? Eight thirty. Eight thirty is good. <sighs> what else is new? You got your bag of pret. You got your giant bag of pretzels. You got. Tea, I've got coffee, we're good to go. Welcome everybody. All right, so as you may know from previous episodes, uh, we met in China, we've been married for nine years. We've known each other for 10 years and there have been, there have been cultural differences and not all of them make things easy. Sometimes the differences make things more difficult, sometimes less difficult in some ways. We're going to talk about it. If you want to share your interesting things about your culture, not necessarily cultural differences, but you know, unique things about your culture in regards to dating, marriage, having kids, raising kids, uh, all that stuff, you know, share. That'd be great. Love, love to hear about it. I think we can start though with maybe just going in order. Uh, of dating dating culture in China. Um, I obviously neither of us have dated in a while. I haven't. I haven't been on a date in ten years. How about you? Same. Probably same. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Good answer. Uh, so, do you, what when people we, 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 Okay, let's say an average person, when, back when you were in your early 20s, let's say, when people were dating, number one, what was the purpose of dating? Was it, we're dating so that we can get married? Or in pe people in their early 20s, are they not even thinking about marriage? Are they, are they thinking, I need to find someone to get married to? What is the general reason to date in your, in your early 20s in China? And maybe it's changing now. I don't know, but when you, back in the day, I think it's definitely changing now. But back to my twenties, I'm thirty five, thirty four years old. If back to um, maybe twelve when you years were, ago, yeah, yeah. At that time, I think most of the majority of people are dating because they wanna they wanna spend a a long time with the person and ideally they can get married so the goal is um, the goal is marriage for sure i think yeah. so for me it is but i think it it depends on it's very personal i think but, but yeah but i think um, uh, most of the people are willing to get married there is an, at least it's in the back of the mind right mm -hmm. eventually we'll get married that's the goal. Mm -hmm. How much are parents involved in that whole process? I, I mean, think... how much pressure are parents saying, okay, go out there, date, get married as soon as possible? How, how much do parents care about that? My person personally experience, I don't think my parents gave me any of the pressure of dating a person. But that is kind of unusual though, right? You didn't mm -hmm. get a, you didn't get too much pressure to, mm -hmm. to, <clears throat> date and get married as quickly as possible right yeah but it's common for people to have it in china i think yeah if you're 25 or 26 years old are you still single and not dating 
I think the parents will be, hey, let me introduce someone. Like, even though in the spring festival is the biggest、uh, holiday in China, so all, like, a whole family reunion, a lot of cousins or your uncle, uncle and aunts will ask you, hey, how's your, how's your life? And did you, are you dating? <laughs> That's the first question. Yeah. How's your, <laughs> how's your job? Are you dating? If you're dating, Tell me more about that, per, uh, her or, she, or he. Yeah, and, and then if you are dating, then the question becomes okay, great. What's her, what's, what's her job? What's his job? What's、yeah. his family's background? What's your marriage date? Background? <laughs>、yeah. are you, when are you going to get married? So that's kind of like a pretty gossip or、like、a gossip kind of culture. I think that's the main thing for people gathering together. Just, you know, other than that, what are you going to talk about? <laughs> yeah. Yeah.、Um, my, my family from my father's side, I wish nobody watching from my father's side. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> I have many aunts. I think I have six and then two uncles. They are always asking, giving pressure to one of my big s i s t e r I think she's still not, she's not dating even now. I think she's like going to 40. Um, Yeah, so a lot she of. She a leftover people, woman? She stopped coming to visit for the family reunion. Just party, because just of the pressure? Because、wow. I don't think part of the reason, I believe. It's just very annoying when people are asking, I mean, why you care? Why do you care? I don't understand. Why don't bother me? It's my personal stuff. But it's pretty. I know all the people are feeling in this way. It's just But you have to be、yeah. nice because they are. Older generation, you're supposed to be. Applied, like part of Chinese culture. Yeah.、Um, I would say it's kind of the opposite in America、mm. because, number one, pa- parents tend to not give their kids much pressure. Af- maybe when they're in their teens and stuff, they might have rules like when you're 16, you know, if you're dating someone, they allow their kids to date when they're maybe 16. But they have to know who the boy is or who the girl is. They need to know.、Uh, so there's not a lot of pressure, but they, they at least want to know what's going on. But then after you turn 18, your parents, it seems like they don't really have a right to ask you that question.、Mm. They might ask it in a sort of roundabout way, like, Are you, How's everything going? Are you seeing anybody? That sort of thing. But it won't be as direct, I think. And there's not so much pressure around. Around having to date someone, and if you're 38, 39, 40, people are not too worried about it. People don't, there's not, I think there's not a lot of social, too much social pressure around it. And there's another culture thing that I want to mention is when you're, when I was in school, dating is banded. You are not able to、mm-hmm. date anytime. Your main focus is study. So it's in the, but you know that in, in the, Physical brain, like a physical body process or mental process, is a time about like 15 or 16 years old. You start to realize, oh, I'm interested and I like、yeah. that person, you know. Things start to turn on. <laughs> right. But the teacher, families, and、yeah. parents are turn off the They don't allow the buttons. The,、yeah. So the, the kids will start lying to their parents. So they do it anyway.、Parents. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, a lot of people are dating. I think that's the difference. In America, you, not only are, do parents allow it, but the school allows it. If you know, you see kids holding h a n d in the hallway between classes or even kissing between classes, the teachers will say, Oh, how cute. What do you mean? Kissing in the class? Maybe, but let's say in the hallway between classes, you oh, see oh, two oh. kids. Making out <laughs> between classes, the teacher will say, Oh, <laughs> they、That's、won't、so、say,、cute. they won't kill you. But I think in China, you, they, those two students will be、go、kicked out of school. <laughs> you two, go to my office right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna call your parents. No, it's just ex- ex- it's a normal part of growing up, becoming a teenager. You are, that's the time you're most interested in girls or boys. And so. Generally, I think people think it's healthy to express But it. But I think now it's changing. No,、well, that's that that may be good. That's interesting. Like my age, people st- from my age or maybe younger than me started teaching in school, and I think they understand. They're well educated, 
they understand the, the human being much much more better i think it's kind of like a much more released right now i do think there's one thing about american dating culture that i'm not sure it's super healthy it's i think it's called hookup culture so basically there's at at least in your 20s and maybe even early 30s there's no concept of getting married it's not even a priority it's not even the the goal of then dating what's a is priority? fun literally Having just fun? yes so it's called it's kind of called hookup thank you it's called hookup culture so basically you meet someone you like you may have a one night stand you may have a short you may have a short relationship with them it might be 3 weeks it might be 2 months but there's never for a lot of people there's no concept that oh i'm dating this person so that i'm going to get married to them it's more like we're just having fun for a while when it becomes boring we'll go on to someone else this is hookup culture it's very cool it's very the focus is kind of sexual but also you know, yeah this if this the, the case happened in china uh, people will say oh you're an asshole kind of thing you're a bad bad, bad person. person right that used to be, I think, back in the, maybe the 19, I don't know, 50s, if you were like that. But now, it's totally normalized. It's like it used to be in the in the 90s when I was a kid. If, if you saw someone with a whole arm tattoo sleeve, we'll get to it. We saw comments coming in, but whole arm tattoo sleeve. When I was a kid, if you go to the bank and the guy working at the bank like that, people go, ooh, I don't know about that. And he might have a hard time getting a job because he has tattoos. What Nobody mean, cares China? at all. In no, China? in America. In America. Yeah. Oh yeah. But now it's not a big issue. Uh, no, nobody. Nobody cares. Mm. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> what were you gonna say? You, if you want to be a teacher, if you want to work in a, like a government-related work, you want to be a police. In China, I, I assume that you're not allowed to have tattoos. Now I think it's fine. Now? It's yeah. fine? In America, yeah. No, I was talking in China. Oh, I don't know about China, yeah. I, I'm I, thinking about getting a face tattoo. <laughs> it's going to be on my forehead, and it's going to be a QR code for my courses <laughs> right there. People say, what do you do? I just go, here you go. What, wouldn't it be funny, See though? See the introduction. What if, you got, what if you got a QR code with a link, but, it was, <laughs> but you accidentally got a link that expires, like an expiring... One of those 30 day links that expires after 30 days. <laughs> you messed up. That would be bad. Then you have a tattoo here. Huh? You make another tattoo. Yeah. You cross it. Okay. That'd be tough. You can do laser tattoo removal, I think. But I've heard it's really painful and it doesn't always work. And it damages your skin. Speaking of forehead tattoos, <laughs> you can get a free course. Yeah. In the links in the description, the free course is an English conversation course. It's a great course, quite course to get started with my courses. If you want to learn English, learn how to have better conversations. Also, if you haven't already done so, you can hit the like button and subscribe. That really helps out the channel. Um, let's see some comments here. Hello, Yasser and Joelman. Ray is here. English nerd. Hello. Hello, Mamet. Um, Yer? Yar? It's a Japanese name. Sorry, I can't read that. Tran is here. Hello, Ed Knox. Mar? Nihat? Hello. Hey, from Brazil. Welcome. Yeah, share. I'm curious how, what, you know, your experience is dating. <clears throat> going to break up. Why the heart emoji? Yeah, this. Welcome to that. It's just a thumbnail, guys. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I mean, we're talking about culture differences, so I think it is a <clears throat> it is a relevant thumbnail, which might be slightly exaggerated, the suggestion of it. Um, we should respect all culture, of course. Absolutely. Except for the Canadians. I don't think, I don't think uh, we should respect Canadians. What? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> let's see. Um, you miss those days. I don't miss those days. You want to go back to the rodeo, Ray? No, not at all. Not at all. 
even in junior high, it's been like that forever, hanky panky, uh, or even more is highly uh, tolerated even in public spaces throughout the USA. Absolutely not. It's very highly tolerated public displays of affection and hanky panky in the hallways, as they say. Hanky panky is sort of and could be, you know, uh, kissing and a little, a little grabbing. I don't know. Grabbing what? <laughs> grabbing what? <laughs> Let me know about more, more about that. This, I mean, I mean this. <laughs> you, you don't know what goes on in high school. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so I want to now. I want to go to parental expectations. This is the the tick the TikTok that I it's actually a YouTube short that I found on uh, I found on YouTube. I mentioned it to you. I want to watch it quickly. You can watch it on the main screen. There we go. Now it's kind of blocked. Let me move this up here. There we go. Ready? Mm. This is Xiao Chen. You are not a bee. You are not Thoughts? How accurate? Because that's the kind of the concept of parents. Actually, so so a, a young Chinese man in China has a lot of financial pressure, right? They have to have certain qualifications, A, B, C, D, good car, good job, apartment. How, how real is that? Because that's what I think everyone knows that about. I mean, it's true for a lot of countries, but how real is that? You're asking me? Yeah, in China, how real is that kind of idea that if you don't, you have to qualify yourself to date a girl by doing all those things first, and then you have the chance to get a girlfriend and maybe get married. Um, I think most of I think most of the family cares, but my parents obviously doesn't care. Um, I think that's really depending on. But a, a majority of people who are um, feel they will feel comfortable or not having a lot of pressure if you get married with a person who. C- will be able to afford a house or apartment in China. Um, you know, they see that, they identify that as a responsible for the life, for the marriage. Because when they talk about dating, dating is dating. It doesn't really request requ- request anything. Um, but as family, you have to have a basic financial support, especially from the man's family. Um, I think that's a part of very, very deep traditional culture, Chinese culture. Uh, for a car, where you have a savings, uh, of course you will have a little bit savings, but a house or the apartment will be the main consideration. Car, I think, you know, it's nice to have. Um, I think most of the people, if you're able to uh, 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 um, afford a apartment, I mean, car is very easy. Savings. Yeah. You have to have a how okay, but if you're twenty, when I was twenty five, I, w- I would say when most people are twenty five, mm-hmm. the thought of buying a house is not even. When I was twenty five, that was the. F- there's no way, there's no chance when Depending I was twenty five. Depending on where you live, where you live, but right? also if China. I mean, China is super expensive. The houses. I know, but uh, the country, the countryside, the the town that I live, I I mean, I born my hometown very cheap it doesn't really have a lot of can someone buy a house easily or do their parents buy it for them and then they pay their parents back how does it usually work uh usually just the parents will help the son to get a house 
um, and then they will just pay the loan every month. Much more affordable. I think here, so I kind of got, I think, a little lucky being a foreigner in China because people didn't have those same expectations of me because they knew I wasn't part of the culture. So I never felt that kind of pressure. I never, because when we met, I didn't, I didn't have any money, it's certainly. It's because my mom and dad, they don't really care, even though... You think even if I were Chinese, they still wouldn't care? I don't think they care. Oh. Like my Your mom, parents are so cool. You, you're not the only person. You know my ex-boyfriend, and we also talk about get married, but we didn't really have... In that time, wasn't really care about have a house or anything, you know? Hmm. My parents are... Simple people, they they. The great view of your top of your believed. head here, mushroom. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think my parents trust my all my decisions. Um, yeah. It's just very unusual family. Yeah, you're kind of the exception though, not the norm, right? Yeah. And my my parents also <laughs> never gave me any any pressure. Uh, my little brother got married early and has kids, uh, but he never had any pressure to do that. He just wanted to. My older brother is not married, doesn't have kids, and he's in his mid-30s, right? I don't think he has any pressure. I don't think so. I don't know. Um, um, but there's a lot of, I mean, there's still social social pressures right uh, around couples and stuff taking care of parents especially for the one child generation do you think that a lot of people feel more pressure than previous generations to take care of parents and kids and have both people work i mean do you think that your generation has more pressure than others exactly yes 80s 90s they are having a lot of pressure after you get married. First of all, you're a single couple and you have you allowed to have three kids. I based on my understanding. Yeah, I think there's it's a three. policy, but if yeah, you're two or three. Yeah. So you are able to have at least two kids, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have four parents, like four, two parents for old generation your your mom, your your parents and your husband's wife's parents you have to take care of them whenever they need help i think that's you have to be polite um part of culture like you have to do it it's social pressure and then culture pressure as well and yourself pressure because you grow up in china that that part of thing you cannot get rid of taking care of parents and taking care of your kids and you have to pay a lot on the loan of the mortgage so it's a lot of pressure. I think the average mortgage is also higher compared to income for people in China, right? Like here, it's usually twenty. Depends on where you buy a house, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. In, if in Beijing and Shanghai, it's super expensive. But if you yeah. decide to buy that, you you probably have enough money to to support. Hmm. Yeah, I think when I so when I was in China, I always got a sense of the your generation the 80s 90s kids because mm -hmm. i know a lot of people in your generation as well mm -hmm. the 80s 90s kids of having a feeling of they're the first ones who were the educated generation meaning they all went to college yeah. they're the first ones who are the product of parents pushing their kids to be well educated and so they have a lot of parents have a lot of expectations so they feel like they need to be successful so they have to have career success, but then they don't have siblings. So they have no distribution of sharing responsibilities for the older generation, which would be for a couple for potentially four parents. Right. Mm. And then now they can have more kids. So they might decide to have two kids. So that's another financial burden. So that's a lot of fo things focused on that one generation. I always got a sense that there's it's a very responsible generation focused on doing what you're supposed to do, responsibility, have a good career, work hard, and not just 
do what you love and hang out and relax all the time, right? Mm -hmm. Is that is that accurate? To my sense, mm -hmm. is that accurate? Yeah. Yeah. Is she your wife? Yes. Mushroom is my wife. New new person joining. Hey everybody, welcome. Good to have you. Uh, if you have any questions or you want to share anything, let me know or let us know. Uh, we can answer answer questions. I can't read this comment. I'm not sure what it says. M make put your comments in English also because that's harder to read because I don't read Japanese. What does this one say? I don't know. Oh, <laughs> what is that? I don't want to translate. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, okay, I have another one I want to share. I want to talk a little bit about about parenting. S Mr. Trouser says she looks like a nice person. No, thank you. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna. I want to talk a bit about about parenting change norms as well. I'll move this back down here. She is so beautiful? That's a question mark. Who's supposed to answer that? I would say yes. Hey. Six-year-old Liu Ping Xuan is supposed to attend kindergarten. But today, she would rather stay at home. So they settle on an outside art class. You can have a discussion with my daughter. We negotiate and make decisions. Not a typical tiger mom, but perhaps an increasingly typical parent in the land of tiger moms. Tiger mothers are the subject of a new book by Chinese-American professor Amy Chua, who describes parenting techniques she associates with China. This style condones mothers and fathers denying their children play dates and forcing them to do repetitive math problems to get them to the top of the class. I'm a little surprised. Um, I, it's almost like the idea of striving for excellence is, is, is a bad word. Her book is only now reaching China's shores, but it's already got mothers like Wang upset. Chua's philosophy is rooted in Chinese traditions, but here in China, more people are looking for parental tips from the West. As China modernizes, parenting is also changing. Experts say more people here want their children to have freedoms they never had. More and more parents want their children to choose activities and also even want their children to choose the subjects, uh, what you want to uh, major in college. Unlike Chua's view of Chinese parenting, here playdates are crucial as parents struggle to teach their kids to socialize, an unintended consequence of the nation's one-child policy. They get them to the top of the class. As the little princess, the little prince, when they go out to the world, they don't really know how other people will think, how their behavior affects other people. Academic achievement is still an obsession, but for Liu, success is being redefined. If she is independent, happy, and has good self-esteem, I will consider my job done. Interesting. Change, so changing norms, parents putting less pressure in China on their kids to be super successful. I remember when I lived in, in Tianjin for two years, I would wake up every morning and hear the kid downstairs playing the Chinese arhu, you know, mm -hmm. same song every day for two years, never improved at all. So clearly he was being forced to do that. But some kids get really good and... They often do well in school and do well in university and have successful careers. So, do you, I mean, do you think do you think it's be, a balance is important? What do you what do you think about the st parenting styles, East versus West? More relaxed, freestyle, do what you want, choose what you want, or force them to do specific things to make them really good, like a tiger tiger mom is what they're called right um my mom definitely not a tiger mom but i didn't get what really i really want to learn by choice um my parents of of course just forced me a little bit push me a little bit on learning my <laughs> you know <laughs> school related 
stuff. Um, but I do learn a couple of different things, but it's very short practice. Um, I even didn't know, do I like it or no? I like painting, drawing stuff, and then I, my parents definitely support me on that. And they spend a little bit extra money on supporting me and in my interests. I think I really appreciate that. Um, and it became my major. I think I'm just a very lucky for my childhood, but I, I think a lot of tiger mom in China still, um, but it's getting much, much better because our generation start to become a mom and they know how to respect it. They learn a lot of um, how to raise the kid and then they had a very bad experience when they grew up and then they don't want their kids have exactly the same experience. They want to give more opportunity for the kids and then respect the natural progress of you know they learn more about knowledge how to raise a kid i think that's but i think of it good. yeah i agree i agree it's good to because your kid wants to express their interests and learn things they like you i mean you but, can I, I understand what you mean but i think as a parent you don't give the full control no, no you don't give full um freedom for their kids let them to choose but as a parent you have to guide them through yeah. in a certain thing instead of force them become a tiger mom you can become a tiger not a tiger mom you can let your kids to to be in your direction but you have to in you know you have to teach them in another way not just hey you have to do this because that, that, yeah. that. you respect them maybe they're really interested in certain ways and you can direct them you know what the way you do it exactly how to yeah. for example how <clears throat> to choose how to choose um interests how can we support them right i think that's it you have to they have to learn some of punishment and they have to learn some of the you know uh, reward i think that's need to be balanced you cannot trust a little person to to do all the decision by themselves. yeah you can't it's expect a four-year-old to know what's going to be good for them in 20 years right Correct. they have no idea so you have to make those decisions for them I th yeah I think to teach them how to make decision mm -hmm. that's the thing you know because the decision there are a lot of decisions in the life and you have to know how to do that and then you don't have to worry about them because you know they know how to do decisions I think yeah I think if you go on too far on one side then they'll never develop uh, self-control mm -hmm. responsibility the ability to start one thing and then finish that thing those are very valuable skills right if you get in the habit of never being able to finish anything mm. then when you're an adult and you never you never learn those habits it's going to be really hard to change your behavior also also learn to be responsible responsibility is a habit that's learnable absolutely 100 percent. Right. so if you're i think so some parents are more strict in america there's a, a lot of variety some parents are are like that where it's kind of middle of the road of their parent the kids can choose the interest but if they choose it they have to stick with it they have yeah. to do it that's i think that's right okay, you want to play tennis great but now you have to play you have to go every tennis practice you have to go to it you have no choice thank you uh and i think that that that's a good middle path. If it's too far on one side that the kid just totally loses interest and they're, or they have no interest and they're just sort of robot-like, more robot-like, just study, study, study. But if you go all, all the way on the other side, you just say, oh, I support you, whatever you want to do, you're a little prince. Uh, mm -hmm. Then they never learn any skills. They never learn how to finish anything. They never learn those prince. good- A little prince or princess, yeah. I don't live in a castle. I know. But <laughs> if you treat them like that, because some American parents also do that. They just say, you're my little, you're my little boy. You're my little girl. Whatever you need, whatever you want. Anytime the kid wants something, they give it to them. Anytime they want to do something, they give it to them. Anytime they give up on something, it's fine. Whatever. <laughs> you know, I think that's not good. You're the best. You're the best. I just want to support you. Too much support is not so good, I think. Or pa well, parents often tell their kids in America, you you are the best. If you decide to do something, you will succeed. You can achieve anything you set your mind to, which is a good message in general. But if it goes too far, then you're like a kid on American Idol or a singing show who thinks they can sing and they, they can't sing. <laughs> <laughs> you know right. those shows? Yeah. And so 
it's an interesting balance of forcing kids to do things, but also being responsive to their interests so that they don't become like little robot, little robots. Right. Right. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I have no idea how to do that. I, like Google's policy is a good way to do it. Google says, yeah, you have to work, but you have that 20 percent rule. You have to do something in this 20 percent time, but you could choose what to do. Right. I think that might be a good way to do it. Looking at it like a tech, a tech startup. Your kids are just tech startups. Well, if I have another one of those. Mukbang. Mukbang now. Harmful to spoil. I agree with that. I have enough time and patience. Yeah, I agree with that too. Is it possible to get fluency within four to five months? I think so, but you have to work really, really hard at it. That's something that I spend a lot of time on during the week. So if you join me for Wednesdays and Fridays and also check out my courses, we talk about methods for learning. We talk about pronunciation. We, we learn idioms, word vocabulary, uh, cultural stuff. So feel free to hit the like button and subscribe. And also you can check out a free course in the link in the description. The first link should be a free course to math, uh, to um, natural English conversations. And so you can start start there. And then uh, you can also join the discord group. We have a discord community where uh, you can it's just it's just a sort of English immersion community, you can chat and share stuff if you want. No pressure. There's no pressure. Okay. Mm. All right. Okay, any other questions? I'm sure you've seen this one. I think everyone's seen this one. So if, the, if a strange man says, you been, let's go eat cookies, you say, there you go. If he says, let's go eat ice cream. <laughs> Not a very good job teaching. <laughs> if he says, do you want to go swimming? Okay. <laughs> Okay, say, do you want to go eat cookies? And you say, Strange man says, you want to eat cookies? You say, oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> you it's a good Korean lesson. Yeah. So cute. It's a tough one. <laughs> this kid is so cute. <laughs> this girl is so cute. I think she has a whole YouTube channel dedicated to her. She doesn't understand. She just wants cookies and ice cream. <laughs> Nahat says, uh, yeah, but also children in an American household at the early age learn how to earn money mentality of earning. Mm, it depends. I think it depends on the household you grow up in. I certainly didn't have that as a kid. My parents didn't teach me how to do taxes or make money or anything. I don't think. Kids start earning by babies. Oh, I guess there's that. Yeah. Okay, maybe. Earning by babysitting, working in a local store. My first job was at age 16. I worked in a pizza restaurant. No, at age 14, I mowed yards for money in an old doctor's house. She was 90 years old, and she used to... Just sit at home, sit in her house, and read books all day. Is she still alive? No. She had a very bent neck, so she was like this all the time, bent down. I, but she was very intelligent, and she read constantly. Was constantly reading, mm -hmm. and she had a huge house, probably, I don't know, maybe six thousand square feet, and she just lived there by herself. And uh, she had dogs inside, and it didn't smell very good because they had a lot of 
poop and pee in the house. Who's poop and pee? Dogs. They would just go in the house. Cause she she was not able to always take them out, so mm. it was not a very nice smell. To my memory of that place. That's why I don't like small dogs. Don't talk about that anymore. Uh, no, that's why I don't like small dogs because I would be oh. trimming the weeds. Oh, down, down, oh, you know, trimming the weeds, and these little dogs would be at my ankles and biting me and trying to kill me. It was horrible. <laughs> Which country do you live in? Are you both happy with it? So now we're living in the United States, um, and I I'm pretty happy with it. You happy with it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is a mild endorsement of the United States. All right. Uh, that's, I think that's all I had for today. Thanks for joining everybody. Is there anything else we didn't talk about, Mushroom? Pretzels? No. Have you guys put out the Christmas tree already? That's our plan for today. Yeah, I think actually. we're going to do that today. That's the plan. I'm so excited. It's just microphone good for... <laughs> mukbang? Pretzel mukbang. Mm. No, you have to have two microphones. You want to get the binaural audio. Two mics. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks for joining everybody. And the hot has already put out the Christmas tree. Traditionally, you're supposed to put out the Christmas decorations the day after Thanksgiving. A lot of people put up their Christmas decorations and start doing their Christmas shopping on Black Friday. I like that last question. What is better about America? Nothing better. Nothing better? Nothing? Mm -hmm. uh, Compared to which country? Any, um, any other? <laughs> you sound like American. Now. America's number one. I mean, it's number one. I don't know what to say. Why, why didn't no, you have sorry. A, Malaysia okay. is number one. That's right. Why I'm sorry. Why didn't you have an American flag behind you <laughs> on your wall? If you like America so much like that. I, do, I, I mean, I'm, I'm fine with America. I don't I don't dislike America. I'm, I'm not very patriotic either. Do I have one-on-one -on -one courses? Uh, no. But if you sign up for the yearly membership, on the website, you go to the web, go to the description, and look in the links, and you'll find the website, lukepretty.com. If not the monthly membership, but if you sign up for the yearly membership, then you can get a one-on-one -on -one evaluation with me. Basically, I'll tell you what your main areas to focus on are. I will give you a learning path, which courses to take in which order. And by the way, with that yearly membership, you also get access to all of my courses uh, that are on the website. So that's a good one to sign. It's a pretty good deal, actually, monthly. It's a good it's a good deal. Why is America better than Malaysia? It's not. It's not. <laughs> Malaysia is number one. Everyone knows that. I like that question. What's the secret having a good relationship? Mm, you first. Pretzels? Pretzels it definitely help. You see you how gotta have a, <laughs> If you want to have a good relationship, you have to have a huge bag of pretzels. <laughs> Always <laughs> ready to share with each other. The first, I would say, nine years of our marriage has been kind of okay, so-so. But once we got these pretzels yesterday, things have been really good. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's been rough until now. Yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> um... um like um let me see uh you know. i guess um like um uh, maybe uh... <laughs> secret to having a good relationship it's a good relationship do we have a good relationship i think so okay i think so i think so too i think so three what what, what? what? How many children do you have? Have you got? Zero. Zero children. Zero children. Two cats. I think. And one. One what? One bag of bag of pretzels. pretzels. <laughs> <laughs> I 
The only way you know for sure if you're married or not is if you have a ring. You have to have one. If you don't have it, you're not married. Yeah. Only on the left hand. Right. You see a lot of people wear the red hand. That's just for decoration. The... That's just jewelry. Yes, like this. This is not count as married. Right. I think, oh, you know, I think in China, if you get married, you don't have... I don't know. You have an engage, engagement ring or a marriage ring. They just China has engagement ring. rings, right? Oh, I don't know. know. You should know. I think they just put a, the ring in the middle finger on the left hand. I don't know left and right or red. How do right. you not know this, Mushroom? How do I know? I never get married in China. I know. I think it's in the in this the middle finger, um, not in the bad word, but. I think it's here, and it's a diamond ring. It's always here, not this. So there are no wedding bands in China. The, the, the personal preferences, like, huh? if you like. I think there's only one ring. Why do you need a bunch does of a, no? But rings? does a man have a ring? A man has a in ring. China. Hey, I don't know. I want to do some research on that. Okay, let's do some research on that. We go over here. We go to. Google. We can do later. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Do Chinese couples Divorce. wear <laughs> wedding rings? Very good question. China has acquired the custom of wedding rings as late as post cultural revolution. Okay, so that's maybe 1960s. Um, okay, the first do, question. Which one? Which oh finger which finger do, do Chinese wear a wedding wedding ring, ring, ring finger. finger yeah oh the same yeah okay union between your partner is unbreakable um, do Chinese men wear wedding bands yes that's the yes higher status for men was signified by having several young female partners or concubines. A ring denies that status. Many modern Chinese men do not wear a wedding ring. Oh. Oh. New Josh says young people will wear rings in China. That's su new suggests that Josh is Chinese, right? I don't know. Josh rides e-bikes. That e-bike brand is new, right? Uh -huh. The famous e-bike brand in China. How do I know? I yeah. missed that How period. Do I know? <laughs> um, ring is, ring is not, not a big issue in, big China. Issue in China. Yeah. Okay. okay. We just both we both said yeah. Okay. At the same time. <laughs> <laughs> um, and many things. Mm. Zero children gives you time to focus on cats. We even don't focus on cats. Actually, cats focus on themselves. I feel like. Yeah. And that's enough. No, okay, so the secret to a good relationship, trust. Right. Uh, compromise. Right. Responsible. Responsibility. Consideration. Empathy. Understanding the other, how the other person feels. You, you have to approve that part. Right. You have to improve a little bit. Right. But like a little bit of empathy is good. Bing, bing. Uh, and I would say people people have the idea that common interests are important for a good uh, relationship. I do not think that's true. Mm. I do not think that's true. Mm. So I have we have very different interests. Mm. Right. Mm. But I do. But that's a great thing to do on my own, my interests. And you have that to do on your own. I think if you rely, if a relationship relies on the other person 100% to satisfy everything that you need, like I do all of my interests with my husband or wife, I do everything with my husband or wife, I, I, every, everything I need, I rely on this one person, that is a recipe for failure. I think you have to know it's more like a trust relationship and you have to know that 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 person is not supposed to give you everything in your life, right? Like, I like to read philosophy. Mushroom is not interested in reading philosophy, and that's fine. 
right? <laughs> Why should she be? <laughs> So just knowing that, that I think that's important. I think that's good. So in interest, I don't think have to align very much. Mm. But vow. Oh, another thing. So trust, responsibility, empathy, uh, compromise, compromise, and values. I think that's a big one. I think so. Values are the things you think are important in life have to be aligned. Mm -hmm. If one person is obsessed with, you know, travel. And they need to be traveling all the time and the other person hates it that's going to be a problem if one person <sighs> yeah it, it, if one person has a very strong religious belief and the other person doesn't i think that's going to be a problem like if one person is dedicated if for example if i was a hardcore dedicated christian and you were not i think that would be an issue what are you gonna do to huh? me? I don't know. We, I I probably wouldn't have married you because you weren't one. <laughs> but you're not, and neither am I, and so it works. <laughs> 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 That's. I think there are deeper values. The deeper values have to be aligned. Interests do not have to be aligned. But you said to travel. If the person who are tra always want to travel, I think that would be interest. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, maybe. But yeah. I think if the person, the lifestyle is always constantly travel into different countries, but the other person just want to settle down in one place, I think that will be an issue. That would be an issue. If you don't align <clears throat> on that, that would be that would an be issue. an issue. So that sure. if you're good at a compromising things, that might work out. <laughs> well, but then if the compromises have to be things. Um, Compromises have to be things that you can give up without giving up who you are as a person. Mm. If the compromise is so deep, if the compromise required is so deep that you have to give up something that's basic to you, then you shouldn't be in that relationship. If you have to make compromises on a lot of daily stuff, a lot of little things, you have to make a lot of compromises. But if what you're giving up is a, a critical part of who you are, then it's gonna fail. Because you, you will eventually reach a point where you just explode, I think. I think also don't take a fight too serious. And after quite hours, a couple hours, you have to, you know, to know how to reset things. And you, ha yeah, you have to know the right approach to disagreements because people have disagreements and deal with those in different ways. Also, when you have an issue, you know, think about how to solve the problem, not just, okay, I... I'm, I'm done. Yeah. I think it's also... I'm, I'm done. Let's I think get divorced. You also need to know the other person's style of dealing with things. Like, for example, if I'm not in a good mood or mental condition, mm. you know the best thing to do is leave me alone. Right. Just leave me alone for three hours and I'll be fine. Right. And and But you're different. You You like to talk more. You like to talk stuff out. Right, we're different. We're literally different. I just throw the shit out of the window. Onto me. <laughs> Into my ears. Ah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> then I, but I just filter it out the other side. So what that's my secret. This? So the mm, mm, interesting, fascinating. Oh, what, what, I love that for you. Now I know. <laughs> <laughs> and number six. Pretzels. Any brands is okay. Uh, well, these are gluten free. Right. And that's important. Are you Muslims? No. <laughs> <laughs> I consider myself a non religious Hindu. <laughs> Can you if I had to pick one, I would be a Hindu, I think. I think mm -hmm. if I had to pick one, yeah. Okay. Because cool. I, I just because I love the mythology of of Hinduism, I think it's dope. It's dope. Yeah. So. I cool. don't think it's dope is the right word on about this. <laughs> it's metal. <laughs> Hinduism is metal. <laughs> I'm serious. I like Hin I like uh, my favorite mythology is Hindu mythology. Why? Because it's cool. Are That's you not a strong are you reason. both Hindus? <laughs> No. 
We are not committed to any specific religion. I'd say Mushroom would probably go Flying Spaghetti Monster Church, though, maybe. What is that? You know the one? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to have that picture on my IDs. Right, just for the ID, I think Mushroom would go Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. So this is this is awesome. Um, there is a an, an official church called Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. Uh... And Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster is actually a church. It's a joke church, but it is a real church. So people can actually join it. And if they ask your religion on forms, you can put Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. This is the god of, of the church, is this sort of spaghetti <laughs> thing here with two meatballs. If you're in the church during certain ceremonies, you're supposed to wear a colander on your head like this. Uh, that you'd use to wash fruit and stuff and so because the driver's licenses dri so driver's license photos do not allow you to wear a hat if you're wearing a hat when you take your, your driver's license photo you have to take it off however if it's a religious thing like a hijab or a yarmulke or something like that you are allowed to wear it so if it's a religious thing that you would wear then you can. So for that reason, then people on their official driver's licenses will get photos of themselves wearing colanders because they're officially members of the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. There's one at a very important government meeting. <laughs> here's a stained glass window. Here's she's obviously cares very much about her beliefs. Um, yeah, so. That's pretty awesome. There's a this lady here from Utah. She looks so serious. <laughs> <laughs> These are official driver's licenses, by the way. Uh, is that Patrick Stewart? Oh no. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so that's real. It's a real church. And people get when they when you get married. If you get married in the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster, then you. Um, I think you both wear those at the wedding. Oh, I don't know why they're wearing pirate hats. I think they're supposed to be wearing the traditional, there we go, yeah, the traditional potter pan like that. Yeah, very traditional. All right. Um, thanks everybody for joining. Do I know anybody in my life that joined the church? No, but I have seriously considered it, honestly, because I think it would be fun. I don't know if they have meetings, though. <clears throat> the tentacles remind me of Cthulhu from mythology. Yeah, they do. They, I think it's based on Cthulhu, sort of a food, a Cthulhu you can eat. Uh, thanks for joining, everybody. I'll be back next Wednesday. I just posted a video this morning, so feel free to check that out. Um, if we didn't get to your question, so sorry. Uh, check out the courses. Links in the description. Annual membership comes with a one-to-one -one, uh, evaluation with me and access to all my courses. And you can get a free course if you want. That is the first link in the description. So sign up for that. Um, any, do you have anything to promote, Mushroom? Mm -hmm. No. Do we be able to follow you on LinkedIn? Or, I mean, Instagram? Instagram? No. Follow Mushroom on Instagram. <laughs> or on my LinkedIn. <laughs> or LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah uh all right thanks everybody linkedin follow us on linkedin <laughs> i hate linkedin <laughs> do you like linkedin no me neither okay see you everybody see you next time bye have bye. a good weekend talk to you on wednesday hopefully bye bye